welcome to another episode of the Edgy Analytics. My name is Marianne Warner, and today I'm sitting down with Chris Hanks, who is a consultant here at CCG, specializing in data visualizations and project coordination. Today we're going to be diving into the tie between Power BI and the Agile methodology. So if you're interested in learning more, you can stay tuned. Welcome, Chris. Thanks for having me, Marianne. Of course. So um, let's just set the stage with, you know, I know there's a lot of different methodology and delivery methodologies out there. Can you dive in a little bit more into what Agile means? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so first, before I dive too deep into that, I kind of want to dispel um, some of the confusion around the term Agile. There mm -hmm. um, is big A or capital A Agile, and then there is little a or lowercase Agile. Mm -hmm. um, whereas the, the former is actually um, the methodology itself that we're going to spend most of the day talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and where the uh, latter is actually a trait, you know, it's, it's inherent to the development team in pursuit of um, Agile, adopting an Agile methodology. Okay. Um, now, Big A Agile, the methodology itself, um, refers to an iterative development process where you slowly deliver, you know, working pieces of a product to your customer, and it, uh, and it ultimately started with the Agile Manifesto for software development. It actually started in the realm of software development, and, you know, people caught on, and, hey, this is working really great. We should mm -hmm. adopt this in our industry, too. Um, so the Agile Manifesto, you know, places heavy emphasis in four main areas, right? So the Agile Manifesto emphasizes individual in interactions over processes and tools. Mm -hmm. It also emphasizes working software over comprehensive documentation. Also emphasizing customer collaboration over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. Now, what the Agile Manifesto is saying is, is, you know, forget contracts, forget following a plan. We don't need any of that. We don't need documentation. We don't need process controls. Forget that. No, yeah. no there, that's, not, that's not at all what it's saying. What it's saying okay. is that the meat and potatoes of why you're there as, as a team, mm -hmm. you know, at your client site, what have you, um, is to deliver working software, to collaborate with your customer, to get their feedback, to get them involved in the process, and also to be prepared for change because we humans are horrible estimators. So change is always inevitable. I've never seen a project in my life go exactly, you know, according to plan. Mm -hmm. So in reference to Agile, like that's that's Agile in a nutshell. Okay. And how does a tool like Power BI tie into Agile? Power BI is a fantastic tool um, to implement within an Agile methodology. Mm -hmm. And the, the the best way that I've seen it implemented is, is, is starting off as a proof of concept tool. Even if your customer ultimately doesn't go, you know, with Power BI in the end for a solution that we're involving, it's really great to get started mm -hmm. um, because it starts a conversation. It's very intuitive to use, and you can pull data from a series of disparate sources and bring them into Power BI because it's not only a powerful, powerful data visualization tool, mm -hmm. um, but it is also um, pretty, pretty powerful with data cleansing and data modeling. So you can. Right. You know, quickly build up a whole prototype within Power BI with your client sample data set. Mm -hmm. So it's a great tool for you know a first iteration of work that you can bring to your client. And is there a big lift between going from that proof of concept, that proof of concept version one almost, to really refining it to what the, the client is looking for specifically? Yeah, I'm not going to say that it's a cakewalk, <laughs> but um, it's a lot lighter lift than you might think. Um, because you can actually start out with, you know, building a prototypical data model mm -hmm. and bring that to your client after your first iteration of work and show them, hey, look at this, look at this report that I just developed for you. Mm -hmm. You know, behind the scenes, you know, this is how we've structured your data. If you like this, we can actually build this out into a longer solution, either in analysis services, Power BI does really well with analysis services, you know, or, you know, also building that out into a long-term enterprise data warehouse solution, mm -hmm. preferably in Azure, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like communication is a big component, especially with working with the client, you know, on what what they're looking for mm -hmm. in their, you know, I'm sure they have various tools that they're diving into. Yes. So um, can you talk a little bit to that, how communication plays a role, you know, especially yeah. when you're integrating a tool with, you know, and using a methodology like Agile? 
Yeah, well, referring back to the, the Agile Manifesto, you know, that, that customer collaboration over contract negotiation. So you want to bring, you know, your client, have those face-to-face -face conversations and really bring them to the table. And so Power BI is really good about streamlining that communication, mm -hmm. you know, as a develop, from a developer perspective. You know, I've been on projects in the past where uh, one project in particular where our development team was noticing um, some serious data quality issues within the client's data. And uh, we had, we're having difficulties communicating that to the client. And so we ultimately, you know, Power BI wasn't even a tool that was in the scope of the project that we were doing. But, you know, we, we created some uh, visuals in Power BI to kind of summarize what the extent of these data quality issues, you know, so that the client can quickly look at that and see, mm -hmm. oh, wow, this is a problem, and you know, yeah. instead of having you know to, to, to go through thousands of lines, uh, thousands of rows, and thousands of columns in a database, mm -hmm. you know, having this summar summarized in uh, easy to read uh, visualization, mm -hmm. you know, really help the client wrap their head around it because you know they're not swimming in data all day; they're right. business people, and so being able to summarize that in business speak, mm -hmm. you know, in a visualization that they can adopt and understand within you know thirty seconds or less. Now, the, another great reason why Power BI is a, is a great communication tool, um, in project management, um, Power BI is a great project management tool. Some people might not even think that. I mean, yeah. Power BI it is a report building tool, right? And as project managers, you know, we definitely develop reports for our clients, you know, that involve, you know, project metrics. So, like, on a time and materials project, you know, I've been able to use Power BI in the past to show my clients you know, where we are with budget, how much budget is left on the project, how much, you know, what the average weekly burn is on the budget for the development team, how many hours okay. are left. And so instead of, you know, having this in a long verbose email or on a PowerPoint slide, you know, you have this, you know, nice crisp visualization that they can pop open from their phone and they can see, oh, that's the health of my project. That's great. You know, or if there's any key items, then you can, they can reach out. So on both fronts, you know, Power mm -hmm. BI is really good about facilitating communication with the customer. Awesome. And how does something like, how would you integrate an Agile uh, framework into BI development? Well, I'll preface this statement in saying is that there are a lot of right ways to implement Agile. Uh, while there are a myriad of wrong ways that you can implement Agile, I, I think that there are a lot of right ways. Mm -hmm. So I'll preface the statement in saying, um, this is where I've seen Agile implemented most successfully. Okay. And so it always starts with um, it always starts with a problem or a question that your customer is trying to answer. It always starts with some business question or some problem. And so you bring them to the table and you gather these, you know, these questions or these problems that they're trying to answer. Mm -hmm. And you formulate them and in Agile terms, these eventually evolve into what we call user stories. And so we take these user stories and then go back with the development team, collaborate, and figure out what, what development tasks need to get done to accomplish these user stories for the client. Mm -hmm. And so you eventually will start building out um, a full backlog of work items to work on, right? Mm -hmm. And so then you set a priority of these items, you know, the items at the top, you know, are the most, you know, critical to get to, or mm -hmm. maybe even the lowest hanging fruit. Whereas the items, you know, towards the end or the bottom of the backlog are items that maybe you can address later when you learn more, you know, or through empirical analysis and all of that good stuff. So, so you end up doing that. And then you, once you have that prioritized backlog, then you can cherry pick items from that backlog that your development team can commit to, you know, for a predefined period of time. And so that would be for, you know, iteration one or iteration two, iteration three and what have you. And you pull in just enough work that you know that your development team can realistically commit to completing in this time period. Mm -hmm. And I'll also say that these items that you pull in will be just enough to have a minimally viable product. You know, it's not going to be the end result. It's not nowhere near perfect, but it's something that your client can interact with, something that they can see, and even maybe something that they can use early on, mm -hmm. knowing that it will be you know, improved and iterated upon throughout the process. Mm -hmm. So then you go through that, you go through your development, and then once you finish that first iteration of work, then you go back and bring bring your customer in and say, hey, look what, look what my team did. Look what, we, right. look what we developed over this period. What do you think? 
And so then, you know, they'll have, they'll obviously have some feedback. I love this. I hate this. What if you did this? What if you changed that? Mm -hmm. And so then these might translate into more user stories or more backlog items that you would put onto that backlog. Mm -hmm. And so then you would reiterate that, you know, go through that process over and over and over again, sometimes over and over and over and over again, until you eventually have a fully functioning working product that your client loves and cannot live without. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. So speaking of which, how would you, what advice would you get, give to someone who might be interested in leveraging both Power BI and, you know, through an agile methodology? So it's all, you know, it's mostly just, you know, changing a lot of your habits, you know, as an individual developer, but also at, on a team, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, number one is get, get into the habit of having regular, consistent communication with your customer. You know, not, not into the habit of, you know, touching base at the beginning of the project and then touching base again with them at the end of the project. Have regular, regular checkpoints to check in with them show them what you're working on and get the, get them involved, you know, maybe mm -hmm. even get their hands or get them to interact with what you're doing because that will min minimize a lot of risk. So get in the habit of, of getting them involved and, and collaborating with your customer on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Well, number one big thing. Number two big thing is find opportunities as a development team to meet internally to inspect your own development practices as a team. In Scrum, we call these retrospective. In Kanban, they're called Kaizen. Um, but it's all around the same philosophy of, you know, taking the time to inspect your own practices as a team. What are you doing right? What did you do this past sprint? Or what did you do this past iteration that was that went well? Mm -hmm. How can we replicate that, you know, as the project goes on? Because this is obviously working for us. Mm -hmm. And then also, what didn't go so right? What, yeah. what can we change? How can we improve upon this so this isn't burdening us throughout the rest of the project? So mm -hmm. always finding that way for continuous improvement. And then lastly is always be prepared for change. Be prepared for change. Follow that plan. <laughs> follow that project plan. If you got a project plan, definitely follow it. But if your ship is headed straight for a sandbar, be prepared yep. to veer off course. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Is, so is there anything else that you'd like to add about what we've uh, discussed today? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so just like the delivery process itself and agile, is just as much as agile itself is an iterative delivery process, agile adoption can be an iterative process in and of itself. And what I mean by that is if your development team is new to Agile and you're just starting off, you know, practicing, you know, developing in an Agile fashion, mm -hmm. um, you'll notice that vulner team vulnerabilities and shortcomings are going to boil to the surface mm -hmm. very quickly. And it's going to feel like the spotlight is on you. And that can make a lot of people uncomfortable, you know, with all mm -hmm. of your, you know, with all of your shortcomings for everybody to see. But if you pan out into the big picture and understand that it's going to be pain, it could be painful in the beginning, but the goal is continuous improvement and growing and changes and ultimately becoming a better development team, but also becoming a better, more knowledgeable, you know, team player, better developer yourself. So just understanding that it's also an iterative process with adopting um, is my number one. Well, that, you gave a lot of really good, like, cool nuggets that <laughs> I think everybody um, got something out of. So thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me today. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, and thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Epic Analytics. Bye, everyone.